Wait, what? Crazy? You didn't say I was crazy. You think I'm crazy? Okay, so last session, uh, we ended off with um, setting all our settings and our render layers and kick off the renders um, towards the end of the session. So this session, uh, we'll just come back and pick up all the renders and put in um, new and get a, a movie out of it. Okay, so but before that, um, after that session, I go through my, my renders and I set up uh, another volume pass for the lamp light, which is um, in front of the character. And one more moon volumetric that is um, actually from the second lamp that we, we set up. Okay, so the colors is different, so I just name, and, name, name them a moon and a, a lamp. <clears throat> okay, and also one thing to take note uh, after rendering, I noticed um, the animators that set up this file has the frame range starting off with a negative 44 to an end frame of 109. So that way when we are rendering, um, the, the padding change and because of the padding change plus, there is these negative symbols in the um, render layers, the, the files, um, nuke doesn't pick up this whole frame range as one. So it's split up differently and it and it's a mess. So basically, um, uh, let me just see if I can show you. Um, you end up with files like that with the very weird paddings for the single digit with the negative. Then you have your three padding with which is the correct one. And um, padding of two with the symbols. And yeah, so basically nuke doesn't read them all as one so unfortunately so what i have to do is i need to go in i mean i went through all the the frames and i renamed them by hand one by one of course we can write a script to um um eventually rename the files accordingly to the timestamps and we just replace that that section of the the frame numbers but um yeah i just went in and do it manually um probably next time i can share how we can do some renaming script. Um, okay, so that's all. And um, yeah, so now just take a look in Nuke. Okay, so I quickly put together, um, so I import in all the renders. And um, this is just everything um, A over B. So there's no tweaks within them. Um, there's no exposure change. And um, so these are all renders. Let me just double check. <clears throat> Why is frame not changing? Okay, should we have it? Okay, so now it's working. Oh, yeah, it's just uh, when you're pulling in again, there's some weird. Um... <clears throat> okay, cool. Yeah, so um, I've already put together all the render layers. So basically, we have our background, our characters, um, the volumes, two volumes, and then just the, the right note. So this is how it looks. Um, Okay, so like, so first thing normally what I li like to do is um, I'll just assess how the image look. And so now the background does feel a slight touch too sharp to me. And also um, maybe it's a touch too bright. So I will just do exposure. Okay, then I'll change the density to stops. Maybe I'll just reduce half the stops just so that um, we, we look at the foreground a bit more. So quick. Okay. And then I can add a defocus <clears throat> and just set it to maybe five. Okay, so yep, that's that's fine for me. Okay, so now okay, so this is how I like my background to be. Okay, so next say the character pass and it has this this bow that's really bright. Like previously we did this um crypto mat to to take down this this portion. So what we can do now is similar. We will shuffle out the the light, which we know it's the lamp one. Okay. Then we remove it from 
the main pass. <coughs> okay, then we pass it back later on. Change this to plus. Okay, so the image should look the same before and after. Yep. Okay, so what next is we need the mat of that bow. So I have my crypto mat. So we just in the crypto mat. Select the uh, picker, pick the bow. Okay, and we'll use that as a mat and we'll use exposure to just expose down the bow. Okay, let's just try one stop. <clears throat> okay. okay, with and without the tweaks. Yeah, feels better. Okay, then um okay, so it looks pretty cool. Um so now we need to see my volume. Okay, so when I start introducing the volume, okay, so this is from the lamp, which is too bright now. So um what I would do is oh if you guys notice that there's, there's this switch, um it's just how me how I'm wiring that frame to make sure it works. Um because I did not rename all the frame numbers, I just renewed a portion of it to remove the negative part and then uh, I'm merging back the, the rest of it uh, on the second half. Okay, so I just add a grid, um, say I want to narrow down the cone, I can just do this. Okay, maybe something like that and I just want to reduce it. Um, okay, so that it feels like there's a bit of volume there. Yeah, probably it's a touch too much to my taste. Something like that. Then, okay, again, the second volume that we read, that, yeah, it's too bright. So, same thing. Um, can go in and just reduce the, the exposure. I mean, the mu multiply. And we can just narrow it a little. Yeah, it's too much. Cool. Yeah, I mean just some very basic um compositing. So um again I like to work um very um organized. Um so I have my set which is the, the background, then all my characters and all my volumes will come in, in the tree and I um as a habit let's just work um with all the the wires lined up properly, not like a spider web everywhere over the place. Um that's so that if if happens that this file needs to go to another artist it will be easier for them to um, find what they need to do and tweak um, accordingly. So cool. So these are um, some of the, the basic stuff that we put together. Then say at the end of the day before my output, I want to um, add some aberration maybe. Um, so my chromatic aberration, I can just put it. Uh, so now this will give me this stuff, um, fringing effect. Yep, so we can reduce the multiplier if you feel that it's too much. Yeah, it's a tiny bit of it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um and then let's say you want to go flashy, you can use this expo glow um gizmo, which you can download from um Nukepedia. And then what this does, it, it will close the, the bright area. Okay, so how we can tweak this is um, we can preview it. And now we can just shift this so that we, we are just getting the uh, the dark areas. I mean, not the dark areas, the, the bright parts of the scene. Okay, so say something like that. And I remove that preview. You can see that the glow is just along these bright areas. Then of course this is definitely like too much. Um, so we can reduce the the multiply of the gain or the gain if you want. Okay, so that's very subtly glowing all the the bright areas. Still touch too much. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. Okay. Then what other stuff that you can do? Um. Okay. So because this is a a static shot, right? Say I want to, um, get a maybe a handheld movement. Um, you can add a camera shake if you want. Okay, of course I will not pipe here. Um, I'll just use a checkerboard because it will be very 
slow to iterate with um, all my renders there. So I just use a quick checkerboard. Okay, um, if I plug in the camera shake by default, it will just give me this um, very high frequency um, jitter around. Okay, so then of course, I can tweak the amplitude lower and then reduce the frequency if we want so that it feels like a, a handheld movement uh, if we want it. But yeah, um, I'm not deciding to, to do that for this comp. It's just something that came to my mind that you can do. Okay, um, what else you can do? Oh, um, you can add in your vignette if you need. Okay, so that basically it's your... Um, vignette, so with and without. Okay, uh, it's a bit much for my taste, so I will reduce the, the amount. I just I like to keep it very subtle. Um, yeah, something like that. Then check my output. Yep. Let's look at some other frames. Yep. Um. Yeah. So I think if that is is done, um, I will just shuffle out. I will just remove the the alpha. I do a crop in case you're adding elements that that's exceeding this um, resolution. I just reformat everything just in case um, somewhere down the pipe I accidentally sh um, change something and I'll just write out my EXRs to a, to a folder. Okay, so now um, after writing out my EXRs, let's just take a quick look at how it looks like. Okay, so if I play through It looks like that. Yep, so this is already pre-rendered, so I don't waste you guys' time. Um, so it's pre-rendered. And on uh, in this, I added a, a small a light lens flare, which I can show you how it's done. Um, there is this Gizmo Core Flare Factory. Okay, um, it's a very heavy Gizmo, so it takes a while to load. So just just let it load. Okay, as you can see, it takes a while. Okay, so if I view from that node, okay, so I get my the point where my, my flare is generated. Okay, then I can change my um, flare to a different kind of flare that um, that I need. Okay, so say I change to a blue, um, yeah, this is the, the typical um, lens flare that this person will use. Okay, um, and of course now I just want something from my, for my warm light. So I will just find, um, say a warm light. Let's just take a look how it looks. Let's configure. Okay, so say something like that. And I will just plus it on top of my renders. Okay, I need to shift that to somewhere where I know my light source is. Okay, of course there's a lot of settings that you can tweak, like you can adjust the the cost, you can adjust your radius size if you want. Um, you can, okay, let me just put it down a bit. Hold on, let me just, okay. Okay, say something here. Okay, yep. Um, it's too bright for my taste, so I will just again uh, mix it down if I if I need, or not mix it down. I can go into my core and then uh, I can reduce the the mix if I want. Um, or you can tweak the gain to to reduce the the brightness. Okay, go to raise. The raise looks a bit too sharp for, for me. So I can, um, I believe I can blur the raise slightly. Yep. Then, okay, let's just see. This is the ray. This is what the core is doing. And chroma. Yeah, this is a bit too bright. So I'll reduce the, the mix to none. Yeah, I don't like it. And then this one, yeah. Uh, if you want to go fancy, I, I don't know. Doesn't look too nice to me. Yep, so now we're getting all this subtle um, lens flare effect on the, the image. And let's take a look. 
with and without. Yeah, it's a bit much, so I will um, I can reduce the mix. Um, yep, something subtle like that, and yeah, and then I'll re-export that. So this is how it looks. Um, with everything come together. Cool, and then I guess the next thing um I'll do is I'll just put into either Premiere or um After Effects, and I'll put in the audio to, to export out the the full movie. Okay, um, uh, when you see when you render with motion blur, and towards the end there is this subframe causing um some artifacts. So this um uh, has to go back to Anim to get them to fix it. Um, I believe it's some subframe issues that's is causing that. I'll put in the movie with sound towards the end of the, this video and um, yeah, if you guys have any questions or you want to ask me, feel free to leave in the comment section and thank you. Wait, what? Crazy? You didn't say I was crazy. You think I'm crazy?